going? Um, welcome to another RMB Fire tutorial. In this tutorial, um, I'm gonna show you how I go about uh, like using materials instead of red instead of redshift with Houdini. Um, the last tutorial that I did, uh, it's first day with redshift, and this is a continuation. Like we're gonna use the base scene that we set up on first day with redshift, and then we're gonna do um, first day materials so we have an hdri dome using the rma um, parking lot volume one pack um, we have two lights um, using a three-point light setup so we got the two lights and the hdri in the scene we have a sphere with tessellation we have a camera with a little bit of depth of field and that's it so let's come into our object i mean our camera let's go into a out render view and we're gonna just put our render view right here and then we're gonna go into material and we have a tester material so we're gonna start from scratch we're gonna do rs material and then we're gonna do red shift material so Redshift material, R as material. That's what you want to type. Here, we want to connect this material onto the surface. And then this is what you apply to your object. So, material to test. Okay. Um, in the material to test, let's look into the thing. So, if we click this, it's going to give us all of the parameters. Um, the parameters that I use the most you will see uh, it's on the diffuse. This diffuse is equal to this diffuse. So everything that is in here is already here as well. So, but this is for you to access it using RS ramps or RS noises or whatever you want to use. Uh, we won't go into deep, deep into materials in this tutorial, but as a general overview, you have your diffuse, you have your reflections, you have your sheen, and you've got refraction and subsurface that you know it's more advanced uh subsurface more control here coding overall here for you to give it opacity if you want to make your object transparent or if you want to give it emission optimization which i don't really touch in advance i don't really play with advance at all much okay uh let's see a material of the bat what it looks like so let's come here object select the sphere we want to come in here we want to add a material we want to select the material that you want to test out Se select that click this area so that it brings us back into the material context and we're going to hit render this is what you get as a default material okay um default we haven't changed anything now what i'd like to do to like kick things off when i put in material on the object is use one of the presets to kind of get started with that so we have glass we have tinted glass we have water we have plastic for example i use the glass materials a lot and the plastic material i use it a lot as well as well as you've got aluminium copper gold those are all worth exploring because all of these ones are, are are pretty nice materials that come in already built in with redshift uh, I, I really enjoy using the gold material and on the gold material i will show you guys basically what a metal material is made out of and the difference between a metal and a plastic material for example so as you can see in a gold material the diffuse is set to zero. Diffuse is basically what what the color is on the object, like the coating. But it's usually set to zero on metal materials because metal materials are mostly uh, driven by the reflections. So if we turn the reflection to zero, you see that we don't really see the object anymore. But if we turn it to one, then it's fully reflective. And then the other thing that you want to change on your reflections is like your roughness. So if you turn the roughness to zero, it is, you see that there is like really zero, uh, 
it's not blurred out per se the reflection let me zoom in a little more so you guys can see so if the material has zero roughness that means that it is very sharp the reflections but if we increase the roughness you will see that the reflections are going to get blurred out so this is a lot of roughness a point in between you can kind of see the reflections a little less you start to see them more so that's basically the main parameters that you want to be mostly aware of when you're tweaking like basic metal materials and then for plastic for example it's going to be a different story because it's driven by the diffuse it's driven by the, the paint color so if we change the color here you'll see that it changes there but we're also using the reflection in the same way so we can use the roughness to make it less reflective like that and the IOR basically controls how reflective this thing is gonna be like the intensity of the reflection so that's intense cranking it up and now lastly the, the thing that I wanted to the last thing that I'm gonna show you guys is how to add a little bit of that bump and displacement to the objects uh, but before we go we, we go into that, I'll briefly touch on the opacity and the emission channel. That are other things that I kind of use sometimes. So for example, the opacity, if we make this value black, the object is going to be invisible. An in-between point. Is, it looks dark because it's like transparent. So if you had it on the scene with something on the back, then you would be able to see its transparency. And then the emission... We can set the, set the emission, for example, to 2, but you're not seeing anything because the emission is black. But if we change this thing here, then it's going to turn into like a glowy. So it would like glow, it would act kind of like a, a light. I'm gonna stop that. Right click, revert to default, revert to default. And now what we're going to do is create a decent... Uh, metal material with some um, bump and displacement to it so first thing is we're gonna need some noise so I'm gonna type in RS noise and we're gonna connect the RS noise into the surface and if you're gonna want to do like uh, glass and stuff this is kind of the way that I get it to look much nicer so we come here to the noise we can reduce this to like a 0.2 and you're gonna see that the black and white values get much more intense and the frequency if we increase the frequency we're gonna get much smaller noise and then complexity you can tweak it here and you can change the kind of noise turbulent or cell or whatever but I want to use fractal for this test um, we're gonna put this at 2 and we're gonna reduce this a little bit um, and you can obviously to right now uh, it's gonna give us a very uniform pattern so we can mix materials so duplicate that and I mean mix noises so we can duplicate that for example change it to some different kind of noise and do an RS multiply or you can try an rs multiply rs rs multiply you can try subtraction you can try adding a bunch of different things so here you'll see that it's gonna mix these two materials and give us something a little bit more interesting and then what we're gonna do is do an rs ramp so that we can control the intensity so with the ramp if we pull this white value things are gonna get more white or black much more contrast so just leave that there for control on our object 
we're gonna select the material and go to gold and uh, we are gonna connect our gold material in here so the reason why I had our bump connected on the surface was just for visualization of what the black and white noise is gonna do and then once we connect that into a bump it's gonna make the white parts stand out and the black are not gonna be affected uh, it's gonna go from zero to one in the gray value so the grays are gonna be pumped up a little bit more and then the other ones less it's almost like like if we were to like like kind of like sketch it out um, this is white and this is black and the noise has some values that are like higher in white you know and, high, and some that are more black so what it's gonna do is that the black values it's not gonna ex like push them up and then the white ones is gonna push up a lot so if you have certain grays or something like it's gonna give us those like whoa like patterns like that the heights okay let's stop this and refresh it So we're going to connect our ramp into a RS bump. And we're going to make this a 0.1 value. And we're going to connect this into our bump. And you see it looks messed up because the value is too high. So we're going to try 0, 1. Still really high. Zero one zero five. And you can start to see that it is giving us that value, but let's see what happens if we play with this. So you can see that we're now adding those displacements, those heights based on the bump. And you want to be careful not to go really high because when you go really high, it just starts to look a little odd. Um, and of course, because we're mixing materials, it, mixing noises is a little bit harder to control. But I, I think that I like to do a lot is add like really small noises like this. Connect that onto your bump. And you will see that it, it really breaks up your material a lot. See that? So, as I was saying, if you use this for for glass, and we were to delete this and play with glass, you will see that the the difference between what you saw with glass at the beginning and now, like it's gonna catch a lot more information. As opposed to not having a bump map see that it's totally flat and of course we can play with this and then as you start moving your light around you will see the interesting shapes that the noise patterns that we made will, will do to your object um, and then the last thing that I want to touch on is you can in what the bump does it's it's basically faking that up that, uh, that displacement but if you use an RS displacement this will actually displace your geometry for real so in this case you would connect it here and you would connect it onto the displacement now a couple things to note is that you're gonna want to come to your object and select the displacement and i usually start at 0 0.01 start low and start going up and make sure you've got your tessellation enabled so that the geometry that you're using has enough subdivisions to actually be displayed and have bump Alright guys, I hope you guys liked it. This is kind of like an intro to how to use materials in Redshift with Houdini. And uh, I'll be back with more.